Hey guys, Wally Renee here, and I'm gonna go over a few things regarding this 3D printed mass file that I have. I have 400 seemingly different files on Thingiverse, um, but they're all essentially revolving around um, a single concept, and that is to be able to 3D print something that will provide a little bit better protection than say a t-shirt or a bandana. But in order for you to be able to print successfully, we have to go over some things. One is the type of printer you're using. Um, most people, I assume, are printing with fused deposition modeling printers, FDM printers. These are the cheapest, most readily available printers found at most high schools, libraries, um, and things like that. Fused deposition modeling is a fantastic technology that enables very inexpensive prints. So a mask like this will print for probably like $3. Now, if you're using fused deposition modeling, we need to talk about some things. One of them is what type of plastic are you using? There's many, many different types of plastic for FDM printing. Um, the most kind of expensive and super cool material is something called TPU. TPU is thermoplastic polyurethane. It is a flexible material. I have a few TPU prints with this mask and it's so, so awesome. The downside to TPU is that it's um, expensive and it's also difficult for a lot of printers to print and it it is extremely slow so a mask like this will take 18 to 24 hours to print at a tpu so most people are not going to print at a tpu the other type of materials are pet g which is polyethylene terephthalate pet g is found in most water bottles and it is a very biocompatible type plastic um you could print PETG on most FDM printers. It does require a higher temperature and a higher um, kind of print bed temperature as well as extrusion temperature. So you're going to be at more like 240, 250, 260 uh, Celsius for the extruder and the bed's going to be more like 80. Um, that's a really good material to print from and it is super durable and it's more resistant to chemical sterilization agents such as isopropyl alcohol and um, hydrogen peroxide and things like that. PLA is what most people are printing out of. PLA is polylactic acid derived from plants. It's super inexpensive and it's um, probably the most commonly printed material on FDM printers. Now with that said, there's um, regardless of what material you're printing, um, there's some settings that we need to go over. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But with PLA, one advantage of PLA is that you could actually use a blow dryer. Because it has such a low melting temperature, you could use a blow dryer or a hot water bath and basically dip the, um, without, of course, without the, the elastic and the gasket, dip this in the water bath. And then what you're going to do is conform it to your face because it'll be flexible. It'll be, it's a thermoplastic. Now, with that said, regardless of whether you're printing out of um, TPU, PLA, or PETG, you need to understand something about layer height and infill ratio <clears throat> and extrusion rate. So infill is the setting that determines how uh, solid the print is. The, the layers between shell 1 and shell 2 on the inside, infill ratio is how much of that's actually filled in. Now, typically when we print with FDM, we're doing an infill of 15 to 30%. Um, but for this type of print where we want it to be airtight, we need to do an infill of 100%. Um, 100% infill, that's super important. There's been a num numerous publications in peer-reviewed journals that talk about how to print with FDM printers and have it be gas tight. Which if your mask isn't gas tight, then there's really no point in having a mask. So infill of 100%. The other thing that determines whether your mask is printed gas tight is um, if there's any micro gaps between the individual layers. Typically, FDM printers work by 100 to 200 micron layers, and it slowly builds up, and the plastic is being melted in layer by layer. If there's gaps between the layers, then you're not going to have a seal. Well, <clears throat> there's been some studies that have shown that if you have a flow rate of 98 or infill um, with an infill rate of uh, 100%, then you're going to be gas tight. What is flow rate, and how do you change it? Well, most printers, you could change flow rate on your slicer settings, just like you can for infill. Flow rate is basically how much plastic is laid down on each layer. Now, 
Typically, if you look at, say, the Prusa Mark III, um, flow rate is going to kind of default for PLA at about 95. Studies show that you need to be at least 98 in order to get a gas seal. And what it's doing at 98 is it's depositing extra plastic for each layer to make sure that the individual layers are fused together in a, in a more um, kind of controlled fashion. It, it's... It won't be as pretty of a print if you print with a higher flow rate um, because you'll actually see little ripples in it, but it's going to be a more sealed print. The other way that you could change the amount of plastic laid down is by your extrusion multiplier. Extrusion multiplier is very similar to flow rate, um, and you could set that to 1.5, 1.2, anything above 1, and you're going to get a, a seal. So that's kind of going over that. Now, a lot of people said, hey, did you know that your print has a hole in it right here? I'm like, yeah. Of course I do. And what that hole is, it's for a rubber valve, an ex exhalation gasket to be glued in place. The way that it works is um, when you place your filter um, in place, the resistance of air uh, coming in is such that, especially if you get a seal around your face, there's, there's suction pressure that pushes this valve down airtight so that um, all the air is coming in through here. When you exhale, um, it's going to follow the path of least resistance, which is this valve is just going to flap open and air is going to release. Now, you might say, well, what if you're sick and you're breathing through here and it's exhaling out of here? Is that going to protect people? No, it's not. So some people are um, actually putting a um, vacuum bag HEPA filter right here in that exhalation port, which is one extra step that you could do. Now... Let's talk about the filter. This is a, this mask was designed, it's written right here for the 700 filter. Now, if you get third party inexpensive ones, I can't guarantee that they're HEPA. HEPA is a standard that says that it's filtering out 99.7% of particles 0.03 millimeters and larger. Um, if you compare that to say the gold standard um, N95 mask, um, N95 is only filtering out 95% of particles in that same size range. So it's actually essentially an N99. But like I said, I can't guarantee the quality of these if you're buying um, non-official filters. The real ones are actually quite expensive. Um, the knockoffs are not expensive at all. They're like a dollar a piece. Um, so this snaps in. Now you might say, well, what about the gap here? Well, you could use hot glue or a O-ring gasket. But it fits really tight, um, but it's still probably not airtight. So you want to use something that's going to seal if you put this in. Okay, so a couple other things about this mask. If you're not heating it and conforming it to your face, which with, if you are, be really careful. Don't burn yourself. Um, just be super careful. What you want to do is use gaskets. These are silicone gaskets found at most hardware stores. There's also medical grade silicone that you could use. Um, when you have the proper elastic, which by the way, this is marine elastic found at most hardware stores, it's going to compress this so much against your face, you're going to create a seal. And I have tested this mask for a seal around my face, um, and it is does form an airtight seal. So that's one thing that you need to, to understand. You guys are probably not going to be able to test yourself and get this fit checked, but you need to understand that this is something that needs to be tight around your face. And for me, that required two layers of gasket material here and only one at the nose and chin area. Um, you could use window seal material, um, single-sided foam tape, neoprene. Some people are using yoga mat material with um, double-sided tape. And some people are just heat treating these and conforming them to their face, things like that. Um, it's roughly about 15 inches of material that you'll need. Okay, so moving on, um, people had concerns. Well, this is a relatively small filter um, compared to some of the ones from 3M, some of the respirators. And so um, what we decided is we came up with a Roomba i7 filter. Now, if you compare the sizes, they're drastically different. In fact, the i7 is a much better filter. It's bigger all around, and it actually has this neoprene gasket right here built into the filter. See that? And we designed a, another mask. Okay. This one is printed out of PETG. Um, so cool looking. It's like a Darth Vader mask. Um, it's, it's, 
it's my favorite mask that we have. And of course, you could print the cover as well. Actually, I got it on backwards. Um, print it out of whatever material you want. Um, so, one thing that we need to talk about with, with the i7 is a little feature that's built in. Um, you see this flange here? This neoprene gasket will snap in and press against that flange and seal it all the way around. Um, so there's no need to hot glue these in. There's no need to, it's a super tight fit. Um, there's just, it's, it's a really cool design. Better filter system all the way. Um, these are expensive. If you get the real ones, the true HEPA ones, they're roughly, I don't know, um, for three, it's like 30 bucks. So it's like $10 a piece. But <clears throat> now let's say you're in a hospital setting, you could just chuck this at the end of the day, or you could use hydrogen peroxide, um, vapor sterilization of the filter. For the mask itself, if it's PETG, you could soak the whole thing in isopropyl alcohol for five minutes to literally just dunk the whole thing, or you could spray it down. You could use hydrogen peroxide, uh, gas sterilization of that as well. Um, most people are just chucking, chucking this and wiping this down. Um, it can get expensive with these. The knockoffs are super cheap. You get a pack of 20 for like $20. So they become more like a dollar a piece. But like I said, I can't guarantee the HEPA rating of those. It's important to get true HEPA filters. Um, so let's also talk about another system because people were like, well, I like this, but I, I don't like that it's integrated with the mask. So we have um, another mask. Now this one just happens to be printed out of medical grade autoclavable resin on a fancy printer that's uh, it's called a Sprint Ray Pro. It's a DLP printer. Um, this whole thing could be autoclaved at the end of the day. And you could step, snap in a new system like this with the valve properly placed. And you can, we have them available for all the various different um, filters. So we have it for the 700 here and the i7. We also have our own um, MUSC design box that you actually cut your own HEPA filter out. Now, there's some dude online um, saying that if you cut a HEPA filter, you're gonna die from fiberglass inhalation or something like that. Totally not true. Uh, most modern HEPA filters don't use fiberglass anymore. Um, and so you can look at the MSDS of your HEPA filter to determine if it has fiberglass particles in it. Um, some MERV 16 still have fiberglass, but you, you don't need, you need, you need anything probably above a MERV 13 for your HEP, for your filter. If you're buying giant filters and cutting them yourself. But anyway, I hope this clarifies some things. There's a lot of misinformation. Uh, just to reiterate, misinformation is if you cut HEPA filters, you're going to die from lung cancer and with it, um, totally not true. But like I said, check the MSDS of your filter. Misinformation number two is you can't print air tight. That's not true. There's peer-reviewed publications and evidence in the literature that you can print air tight. Misinformation number three is that the Roomba filters um, are not able to filter out um, particles better than um, a, a, a wet t-shirt. That's not true either. A true Roomba filter is HEPA rated. And like I said, it's basically an N99 compared to like an N95, which is the standard in the medical profession right now. So anyway, I hope this helps, guys. If you look at my Thingiverse, um, there's a lot of files. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's easy print masks. We really designed these that they could print flat on the build platform like this, that they don't need any supports. Um, they are incredibly easy to print on any printer now. We, we basically modified the design so that it's super easy anybody could do it. The files now are nothing like they used to be when I first originally designed this. They've been reiterated like uh, at least 30 times. So this is literally mask 30 here. Um, so yeah, good luck. And um, let me know if you have any questions.